Fantastic. Good morning, everyone. Well, I should say greetings, because I'm not sure when you'll be watching this. So as an inclusive um, specialist, then I will say welcome, whatever language it is to you. And, and to my friends who are in the deaf and hard of hearing community, hi, my name is I-S-A. I am Lisa. So welcome, welcome. Coming to you from Madison, Wisconsin, and I am so excited to have my friend. Jolene, are you laughing because of my accent? I mean, yes. that is, that's true. That is right here. It's all nasal, <laughs> born and bred, you bet. And so I am so excited to have my friend Jolene on this, and she's going to tell you some things about how we can be better allies to the AAPI community. And Jolene, introduce yourself. Tell us about you, my friend. I'm in Seattle, and um, I talk about curiosity and how to use it to come up with new ideas. And um, I just popped into the Stop Asian Hate piece uh, nine days ago thinking, all right, here's a spotlight. And so I'm using my creativity, all this creativity. Okay, we're gonna channel it in here. And, and marking and everything, I'm like Lisa. Lisa K, the everyday gay. You know, to, to reach out to people and to use my creativity to figure out how we can get people to, to want to care. Absolutely, that is so wonderful. And I'm guessing that it's different for you in Seattle than it is here in Madison, Wisconsin. And Jolene and I actually met um, on Lenora Billings Harris's forum that she had. And we were talking about inclusion and inclusivity. And yep, I'm Lisa Kay, your everyday gay, and you are, you know, curious about lots of things. So Jolene, one of the big questions that I have for you is, so I'm a cisgender, um, German American, middle-aged, able-bodied, monolingual, you get the idea of where I'm coming from. I do know that I have a lot of privilege and I would love to, I'm also a professor. And so I talked to this with my graduate students who are gonna become school counselors. How can I being, um, in a majority situation, go from being a small A ally to a capital A ally for the Asian American and Pacific Islander population? Uh, to be curious, just to, to be curious. And, oh, I saw the Atlanta shootings. Oh, huh. And then, and then to, to realize, oh, I wonder if there's more to it. And is there more crime than that? And is there something that I don't know? And how is that impacting Asian Americans? The term curious is also, it's a safe word because through that you are giving me, what I hear in that is you're giving me a, a long enough um, rope to learn. It's not that I have to jump in right away and, you know, know everything there is to know about the, the entire culture. And so I love that I can do this. And, and that's why I wanted to do this talk with you too, to be able to say, you know, dear LGBT community, dear National Speakers Association, dear school counselors who are out there who are in my world, you know, even if I don't know someone from this culture, I want to be curious and I want to be, I want to be respectful so that I can help. And, and I love that term. So yeah, anything else advice that you have for us is wonderful. Yeah, I'm, I'm full of it. <laughs> but, but the thing is, the, like, I think that I'm asking um, for people outside of my four best friends, I'm like, I'm asking to be curious and to look at an article, to watch a video and to know there's more to it and understand this is deep. And um, and if you don't know any Asian Americans say, and also we're being isolated, so we're not, or well, well, it depends where you're at. Um, I'm in Seattle and so I, I'm not going anywhere. And so I'm not around people. And so I'm doing these conversations to Asians talking where you can hear what I'm talking to another person my age, a, a woman my age, what are we talking about? Um, and a couple, you know, I've, I'm doing, I think I did 14 um, conversations. So to give exposure from different, different perspectives because I, as Japanese, Chinese, and Swedish and fourth generation American, I perhaps have a different bent than some other person. And so I'm trying to get as many voices as possible. And I want people to know that 
even though a lot of Asian Americans, um, you won't see it. They won't, maybe won't have a frame. They maybe don't have any articles. And you say, you know what? They didn't say anything about it. They didn't bring it up. It must not be uh, impacting them. No, no. Uh, there's, yeah, uh, like, I'm going to say like 95% they're impacted. Now, if they're not, say, then they're not paying attention and trying to like, again, like, I don't, let me just, let me not have any news and let me, I don't want to see it. And, and they're, but, but I would say for the majority, people are affected because we see our grandmothers and our parents. But I also want to share with you um, that this is not just old people in walkers who are being um, pummeled. Well, and, and with that, and I will tell you, I mean, um, I was abhorred at the video of the the person who was in downtown Manhattan walking to church, right, and then was assaulted, and the people in the apartment building closed the door, and I was like, and they they appeared to be, you know, black people and 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 my my apologies i'm not trying to insult anyone with that i'm learning as well and i was like how sad for our society that how do we not help our human kind our friends whomever it is it doesn't matter yeah i mean if you see someone getting you know hit or kicked or whatever you know, that's where I'm like, let's interrupt this. Let's stop. And, you know, and those, those are part of the trainings that I have too, because it's like, we are all, we all have our own stories. We all yeah. have our own, you know, identities that, that come into this. And then to find the backstory about the gentleman who finally was arrested was mind blowing. And I know that this will, I don't want to go too deep into it because you can look it up later. I mean, we are, you know, this is not an April fool's joke. We are, you know, here April 1st talking about this. Um, but I, I love the generational spin that you gave to that because it's not just this segment. I mean, it's all of, all of it. I, I'm curious. So in Madison, Wisconsin, uh -huh. um, I'm wondering what you have heard of in your world of the diff of Asian hate. I know you're probably going to be a little bit more informed because you were in this work, but still, I wouldn't know about any of this besides Atlanta and like the the three famous, the granny. I'm wondering what you have heard. I, and I will tell you, not a lot. And in fact, I actually had a, a graduate class last night, and and I asked some of my graduate students who are going to yeah. become community counselors, school counselors. I was like, okay. How many of you have had conversations? And this was a crisis and trauma class. And I was like, okay, hey, if you're going to be a crisis counselor or a trauma counselor, you know, even if you don't have this in your immediate sphere of influence, yeah. I want you to know about it. And so to answer your question, there wasn't a whole lot being talked about with the, you know, central, south central part of Wisconsin. Um, and, you know, I would say that for helping educate my graduate students and, and my friends, um, we probably have um, the biggest Asian population would be the Hmong, our, our friends who are Hmong. And, you know, and trying to, um, I want to show up however I can. So I have a Hmong story cloth here. And, you know, just however I can, I, I don't want to be a white savior. I don't want to come in and say that I know everything or or um, assume that because you're not white that you don't have what you need moving forward, whether that is intelligence, because, you know, everyone is different. So let me back up. So to answer your question, I would say in my world, I was so excited that you reached out because I, I want to learn more and I want to, you know, spread the message. So. Yeah. Um, so I was I was listening to Connie Chung, who was talking about it was last year with with the hate um, really being prevalent with the permission to go ahead and attack um, Chinese and anybody who is Asian. Um, she was pleading her colleagues in the newsrooms, please, please cover. And they wouldn't. Right. And it's just and if you think, you know, five point nine percent or so Asian Americans, that's not that's a small market. So how much, you know, for ratings and and do other people care 
you know, about Asians that they don't know. And, and so um, I, let me share with you a couple of clips. Here are a few killings that we didn't hear about of Asian youth. This is Tommy from Seattle, where I live. This is 2017. He's 100 pounds. He's smaller than I am. And he was holding a pen, and the policeman shot him. And this is last year, 2020. This is Jessica, and she got a bolt through her right eye, but she is alive. This is San Francisco. And this next one, this is Kevin, also in San Francisco, and he was walking, and he was shot dead, too. And this is a 28-year-old woman who is Cambodian, and she was shot in Compton uh, last week. These are just in the last two weeks. This is March 17th in Houston. There is a Korean lady of the wig store and this lady um, just starts, who's twice her size, starts beating on her. And then um, a couple of the other um, Koreans try and help and, and uh, it's pretty pretty bad. And then they go outside and then um, then they're in their car and they try and roll, try and run over the Koreans. She continued to struggle, even hanging on to the vehicle at one point and getting her arm grabbed, but she eventually fell as a vehicle with the suspect inside sped off. You can see, ooh, there she is just lying in the street. This is the site two seniors woke up to around 3.30 on Saturday morning. This must have been so scary for you. Yeah, yeah, these are terrible. Raging flames, two cars set ablaze. Mr. Chang, who only wants to use his last name, owns one of them. The other belonging to his neighbor, who doesn't want to be identified. Both vehicles charred to a crisp. I didn't look at the news the last two days, yep. so, um, but this was um, a couple Man. days ago. So this is yeah. Washington, D.C., and, and this Japanese guy was punched and he was walking. So that's just a few. I'm not combing the news, but this these don't make mainstream. But that one, gosh, the one on the subway, are you kidding me? How does that not make the news? You know, and, and it's interesting from from the white privileged um, sense of power. It, it's interesting. So the first question I asked is who had the camera, right? Who doesn't want to get involved? Who says that it's okay, you know, for that to happen? There were adults on there, right? They, yeah, oh, there were just, adults, yeah. Yeah, you know, and so it's like, why as a society don't we say something? Why don't we try and stop something? And and then and try to learn about the humans. I mean, that's where, you know, it, it's just it's so. I, I'm going to say this. This is this is how I feel. I am I am. I, I can apologize, and tell you that it hurts me to the core when, um, let's say hypothetically, a leader of the free world, you know, maybe a couple of years ago, you know, makes statements to their following about racial slurs and, and whatnot. And, and I will tell you that I was never a fan of this person to begin with, but the very, very first, like, thing that he did making fun of a differently abled or a very abled reporter and no one like said anything about that no one was like you can't do that and to me some of it is the periphery right to be able to say oh well those are just words and it's like yeah. oh, I mean I just got goosebumps right now where it's like we something's got to change yeah and the, the thing is with words 
Um, for example, I also want people to know this is not just New York. This is everywhere. And it's not just, you know, I, I would think a lot of them are, you know, it's just in Chinatown. Right. Well, the, well, the Asians are. No, it's it's everywhere. And I'm, I'm also surprised. My friend, um, I live in a white area, a suburb of um, Seattle, and my friend who's Chinese um, and very, I mean, it doesn't matter, but he was driving and there were three white guys who were yelling at him. It was at an intersection. And the thing is like, oh, sticks and stones can break my bones. However, what if my friend decided to be, oh yeah, I'm going to stand up. Then what happens? And, and the thing is like, um, my friend has a, um, has a um, donut shop. Now he's in South Seattle. So there's more, there's more going on in South Seattle, not in a sub suburbs. He has a donut shop and there was a, a lady who came in who didn't want to pay 250. It's on the board and she wanted to pay 99 cents. And it's like, no, it's 250. And so she says, all Asians should die. I hate Asians. That's why they had Japanese camps so they could kill you all. And so, you know, those are words, but you know what? Those are pretty impactful words. And, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, keep going. That's... Yeah, and, and so there's, um, I haven't even been on public sites because I'm trying to get conversations going and trying to do bigger picture things. So I'm not really on the news or the public sites, but um, even the neighborhood sites, when I post something in my neighborhood, there are they're words like kill, you know, let's return the favor, you know, and there, there are definitely words they're using. They're not at me yet, um, but it's just... There's a lot of killing out there. This is in my little, um, I was talking to um, my little buy nothing group who I know are just the nicest, um, late, mostly mom ladies in there. And um, they're like, well, at least you're safe in our neighborhood. I'm like, no, not, you know, and it's just, um, so it, it's, it's all over. And I'm trying to localize and, and let people know, oh, this was in Kenmore. Yeah, this one happened in Alderwood in your neighborhood. Uh -huh. And this is in my neighborhood right. to try and get it tangible. Um, at least that from your perspective, how do you get people to want to care? Like, how do you make it close to them? Mm -hmm. um, I sometimes will focus on the intersectionality to be able to say, okay, if I am, let's say that I'm speaking with an all white um, group, okay? Yeah. What is it, what, for me, what is the common denominator? Okay, so yeah. we all grew up, we all had some type of a family, whether it was nuclear or whatever it is, okay? So how you grew up, you know, creates those biases and babies are not born to hate. And so if you were nurtured in that way to say, oh, when I see this person, this is what I say, or I'm gonna walk on the other side of the street when I see this person. So we have to change the narrative. We have to educate everyone. So going back to the intersectionality. So I have a nephew, or I have a nephew who is neurodivergent. And so every opportunity that I can to talk about, you know, in the land, in the world of autism, here's my nephew. Here we go. Um, I've so had... let's pause for a second. I, I almost know neurodivergent because I watched the show Atypical, which is a fantastic show. I thought it was so funny and so helpful. Um, so I am neurotypical and yes, you neurodivergent are. is the opposite where you're on the spectrum. Is that what you say? Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. And yep. And, and so just like this, so having these conversations where I can personalize it and I can say my nephew is on the autism spectrum, neurodivergent. My uncle had polio. And so rather than saying disabled, I bring it into varied abilities. And you know, to answer your question, then if I, again, I have these presentations. One thing that I think, and I don't mean to bring the room down, but one thing that we all have in common is that we all know someone who has had cancer. Mm -hmm. And so it doesn't matter race, creed, ability, size, whatever it is. And so it's like, think about this, okay? I am not judging anybody who has cancer, but that happens. So now I know that I, I know that I have this privilege. And again, rather than um, coming in and, and saving everything, I want to learn. So ask questions. And I also tell my graduate students, but be cautious because sometimes there's fatigue that sets in. 
if you constantly ask that one person of color all of the questions or in my world you never ask anyone who is transgender about their junk and so you know it's trying to have these conversations where you're like hey lise can i speak to your audience absolutely jolene tell me what can i do what should i say what shouldn't i say right you know um when i walk in and i try and support um let's say an asian owned business you know, and if I get looked at because, you know, I don't look like everyone, that's okay. You know, I'm, I'm going, I'm here, you know, to support however I can. So I think to answer your question, it is, it's being curious, like you said, and think before you speak. Because I'm trying to, I have so, I have a a number of tabs out. I had a, a fiddling cowboy, um, uh, talk to me yesterday because he's got a dim perspective and I, I'm because I have a number of two Asians talking um, so people can actually see what we're, we're talking about um, but if I'm a viewer and I'm a white male I don't relate so I'm like okay let me get cowboy ranch guy over here however I'm in Seattle so let me get tech oh that's what I yeah so I need like a, a white tech dude and like a oh I need a, H, a white HR middle-aged woman, I think. Because as I'm thinking, if I can get people to like, oh, that's me. Does, does that make sense? Is... Oh, absolutely. absolutely. And I think that the more that we can have those conversations in the world of diversity, in the world of curiosity, we're going to break down barriers to be able to say, and here's what, here's my example. I'm Lisa Kay, your everyday gay. I go to the grocery store and I pick up dog poop just like you. Yeah. And that's memorable. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Lisa K every day. Yay. Right. What do you think? Yeah. Go ahead. I, oh. it, all I was going to say is even if you don't have a dog, you know what picking up dog poop is like. So, yeah. okay, go ahead. Ask your question, my friend. With, uh, with your students, what do you think they might need to know? Let's say about this particular situation. First of mm-hmm. all, that it's happening. I, I have news sites um, that, that are Asian American news sites that report on this. Mm-hmm. Um, do you think that seeing, like, if, let's say if they went out to these sites, do, do you think that would make a difference? It, yes, and and I think it's the reputable sites from the um, the national organizations. And, and when I say that, when I wrote my book, mm-hmm. um, I, I didn't know a lot about the transgender population in order to do the best that I could for research. So I went to the national organizations to say, okay, you are vetted, you know, you have done the research for me. So here we go. So, yep. Um, and, and that goes back to that intersectionality to be able to say, you know, dear school counselor in Wisconsin, um, you are going to have people who, and and again, we have a lot of students who are Hmong and it's like, okay, so how do we work with and support rather than, you know, just saying, well, and sometimes you get the double-edged sword of the stereotype, right? And so some educators are gonna be like, oh, you're Asian, so you're super smart. We're gonna put you in the gifted and talented courses right away. And, And that's not fair. I can tell you that's been a stereotype, right? Um, And so, but having those resources, right? To be able to say, oh, that's good. And I I love, I think you're brilliant on this in your curiosity lens to be able to say, you know, hey, Lise, can I, you know, speak to your world? So, you know, my friends who see this, I have super, super progressive, you know, open-minded friends that are, yeah, absolutely. And it might be for some friends who are over here, you might be the first person who identifies as Asian that they've ever listened to. That wasn't like you said, Connie Chung or somebody yeah. super famous. So this is Next Shark. So this is a um, Asian American site that has. So here, for example, um, Asian photo, erotic photos of Asian women, which you know foments all that Asian, Asian fetishes. Mm-hmm. Um, New York bus driver attacked anonymous racist message and then let's let's go to New York um, oh what's neat in New York is there's some undercover Asian Asian agents so then um, because it's so prevalent in New York so when people try and attack them they're they're undercover police people <laughs> New York I came here to 
blank up yeah. Asians. Um, oh, okay. Attack with a metal pipe. Um, Asian mom punch in the face. Um, so that's that's just one. And so if if you go to some of these sites, it's just there's a ton of um, different things. And then there's there's about four or five reporters. Dion Lim is one of them where you will see the local um, local crimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and so I, I'm thinking I, if you went out and took like, you know, two minutes and saw these and like, oh, gosh, there's more than Atlanta. I had no idea. I'm thinking like people have to come come with us. So, and that prompted, so I have a question for you. So yeah. let's say, yep. So I want to learn about this. This is wonderful. And you're opening up my eyes and my world to this. This is different, let's say, than BLM. Yeah. Black because, Lives Matter. Yeah. Yeah. I think my people know that one. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. Some of mine do. Let's, you, you know, we'll just throw that out there. Yeah, yeah. But, but I think that, because uh, I think my network is 98% white and, and do-gooders, super nice and women's rights and, and all that BLM. And however, uh, I think I'm, I'm almost positive. They're too like, I don't know what to say. So I just won't cause I don't want to be in the wrong and I do not want to feel bad. I, I, I don't want to feel bad and I don't want to take the risk. And, and so I want to say, take the risk. Okay. So you, you, you feel awkward. Okay. What about your friend? Who's like crying every day. Yeah. What about them and knowing that you're not there? And so, um, and I think, so with the BLM movement, um, you know, we are taught, okay, don't make your, ask your black friend, hey, what can I do? Can you school me on um, on, on everything? Cause, because in, in the black community, there are movies, there are documentaries, there are nonstop information. So it, it's, it's, you know, you know, don't be lazy. You can just go out there and learn and, and then maybe get some interaction. But in this case, what movies are you going to watch about modern Asian Americans? And, and like, and there, there are books, but you have to find them. They're not on the top sellers list. They're not on audio book. And, and so you have to, so this is where you, you actually do need to ask some Asians. And I, I'm like happy to be, I was like, ask an Asian. I was like trying to figure out where I could put that up. And, um, and it's not like I represent all Asians. I don't, I, nope. I don't represent all gays, but keep going. Yep. So it's like, however, um, I do, I knew, I know my experience, I know resources and I do have a lot of, I do talk to a lot of people. I am surveying and seeing what other people are saying. Cause I'm fourth generation. A lot of people um, are, are first and second and completely different point of view. Um, but with, with this, um, Asian American piece, there's not much out there. And yeah. so you, you do need to ask your friends and look at the, look at the research. I mean, there's right now, if you go to my Jolene Jang on my, my Facebook, I have almost everything public. I'm just pretty much out there. I'm like anybody who can help, please. So there are videos and everything to just, let's say you, um, to, to do some research and education yeah. and the movie stars. Oh my gosh. I am so thrilled. Uh, with the movie stars, I didn't know there were more than five of them out there, but there are. Um, yeah, and there's they're um, they're youngsters, and um, um, yeah, they're you know 20s and 30s, and they're being prominent, and so you can hear their voices, so you can hear Asians mm -hmm. talking, and mm -hmm. and and the news reporters are very active, and there are also these um, like half an hour, one hour episodes of Asian hate. Like, what is it? And so mm -hmm. it talks about the internment camps and Chinese Exclusion Act and a few things that, that we didn't learn about in school. And so it, it ties it all together. So now there is information, um, but I also want people to go ahead and talk to their Asian friends and just say anything, say hi, you, really anything. Um, the, the problem is when, when people don't. So you could really, how are you? And, and they may not say anything because they don't know how much you mm -hmm. really care. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, but showing up and just being there, even if you're like, hey, I don't know what to say, but I want you to know that I'm here for you. Do you want to talk about anything? Or, hey, whatever. I mean, um, it, it's a big deal. And when I know that somebody cares, like Lisa, when I when I asked you, and you, I didn't even have to ask you anything, you're like, yep, 
whatever you need. I'm like, oh, I'm not invisible. I'm heard. I've, I'm seen as important. And, and that is so empowering to me. That is fantastic. That is so good to hear. Um, and, and I think the thing that you said that, that struck me, and this happens in the gay community too, is, well, I don't want to mess up, so I'm not going to say anything, right? And it's like, you know, sometimes that silence can be, can be viewed as, you know, going along with it. Not always. And so I love the, and then the second thing that you said, and my wife and I are working on, you know, our allyship, and we did see the video of the, um, the Chinese Exclusion Act and, you know, everything that happened. And we were never taught that growing yeah. up. In I wasn't our, either. In, mm -hmm. I, not in my school. Yeah. And so and it's just, and it's so fascinating that, I love, and, and you said this too, the younger generation. So I'm a Gen Xer and I'm like, yay for the people who are, you know, coming behind us who are like, I have a voice, you know, do not put me in the binary. Do not call me this. This is who I am. You know, I, I want to stand up and be seen. And exactly like you said, and I think that this is where it starts and conversations and be like, yep, absolutely. And I love, love, love that you appreciated the openness to where I was like, great, let's get your message out, my friend. Well, I mean, for a number of things, because I'm shut down, I'm shut down other places. And, and even on my wall, it took, it took a ton of me like groveling and like guilting. I'm like, does anybody freaking care about me? Really? If so, maybe you could read an article. I mean, it, it, it took, I'm like, I guess I, my friends are not there. I mean, it, now it's starting mm. to come around, but I had to beg. Mm. And, and so, um, so I, I definitely appreciate you and, and anybody who's do even, even reading someone who reads an article and tells you that I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel so good. Um, and, oh, I wanted to, um, mention to your, um, actually to, to you too, how hard it is for Asians to speak up. Um, and even, and my group, like my, my, let's say I have 1% Asians, um, in my circle, um, and they're confident, they're established. It's not like they're mousy people at all. Um, but let me read a little bit because I think what he says, um, cap encapsulates what, what everybody else is thinking, but he said it. And um, so, and he's Chinese. Um, why is it that I've he been hesitant to speak out against hate crimes against Asians? I defended Kaepernick, even though I hated the Niners at the time. So it's not like I'd <laughs> shy away right. from speaking my mind. And yet I've tried not to get into this argument when it's affecting me closer than ever. Is it because I was raised exactly um, how the model minority was taught to react, to be quiet, to do our part, to contribute to the success of the, of the USA, but not step outside those lines? Is it because I'm worried that what I say may alienate me to those who see me as the good minority? Honestly, I'm not sure, but the fact that I am even thinking about this is blanked up. And he goes on and talks about Kung Flu and Trump and, and all this. And I, I was just like, oh my gosh, because the thing is I'm looking at the people who like this and I'm like, oh my gosh, those are all the Asian Americans who are his friends who now will say, maybe, maybe I could, I could share a stop Asian hate, maybe an article. I mean, I'm not asking for much from my Asian folks. It's just like, but the thing is, if they don't, if my Asian American network has no evidence that it affects them, then all of their networks will think, not a big deal. So. Oh, absolutely, absolutely the truth. And thank you for sharing that. And, and it just takes one. And, yeah. you know, so Jolene, you are that one and you're going to, you know, you're going to be that, that drop. And then this will ripple out. And, and I've seen that in our, in our community to where, you know, my wife and I, when we moved here, we're like, ah, well, you know, we're still not sure where we can live. And the street that we live on, I am so happy to say, had the sign that said, in this house, we believe. And it was, you know, yeah. Black Lives Matter, love is love, you know, women's health rights, whatever it is. Not one, but two houses within four, I'm getting goosebumps right now. And we're like, 
we have allies. Yeah, we have allies in this neighborhood. And I will tell you that, I mean, Kristen Joyner was from Wisconsin. She's the one who created the sign, now lives in Nebraska. So shout out to Kristen Joyner that having that was yeah. our yeah. was our gateway to be like, okay, we can be who we are. Um, and, yeah. and, and we're just funny, you know, and so it goes yeah, along are. with, yeah, well, thank you, you know, <laughs> and, and approachable, but in that, like, you know, should I say anything? And what I want to say, I want to commend your friend who did that post, because I have been nervous as a 52 year old white cisgender woman of privilege to have anything about gay. And I'm like, if I'm afraid, what is that 14 year old who is dealing with lots of different things? going to do in their life. And I was like, you know, I was afraid that people wouldn't pay for gay because I'm a speaker. And at this point, I'm like, if if you don't, if you if you don't want to pay for gay, you're not ready for it. And so that's kind of where I'm going. So dear Seattle, I'm so told I'm actually working with a school district out there too. So I'm excited Which about one? Washington State. Um I don't know how close it is to Seattle, but the Renton school Yeah, district? yeah. That's where the kid was killed. The 17 year old. Oh, well, when you come out, um, yeah. I'll be there virtually, but I might invite you to, to yeah. the show. Yeah, yeah. That'd be oh. fun. Well, I, I love that the idea that you talked about the sign, my color just went weird. Um, I love the idea that you talked about the sign in the window because when people have, I designed a little stop Asian hate frame. And so if I see that, which is very rare, um, I'm like, Oh, um, maybe somebody you know it's a sign maybe you know because yeah. this is it's it's almost like stop asian hate is like so so political i'm like why is it so political like all the other causes weren't political that political so is it just do you think it's political in seattle no or all over no no i mean and, and, and you know what really bugs me i mean one of the many things but on linkedin my group like I'm in groups, DEI groups, HR, um, you know, I go to tons of DEI groups and I'm like, wow, I'll post a few things in there. Nothing, nothing, zero. Hmm. And I'm, I'm thinking, really? Okay. You preach about this. Huh? So that's, that's my thought. Love. I don't love that, but I love that um you are bringing bringing awareness to all of us to be able to say okay you know even if i like something that's a start right and, right. and it's yeah. opening that up and so you know stop asian hate and people who are watching this who who know and love me um are very very supportive and want to learn about anyone and everyone um and then there was one more thing that you said about that um that is now LinkedIn. Um, people are they they claim this. Um, if if I am wrong, then show me show me that you care. Uh, so because these like ghosted, I guess. Um, and mm -hmm. I, I've looked at other people's um, the the very few posts out there on Asians by Asian people. They're just nothing. There's no anything. Huh. And it's just it's like wow. If DEI group people are not on board who is that is and and now I'll, I'll speak to my privilege i guess i never even realized that and so you know if you're feeling that my oh. my, my only guess is that there are other marginalized populations who aren't even in the conversation oh gosh yeah and, and lisa you don't know me very well but for me to feel silenced or to feel like nobody's listening, that is weird. And it is really strange. Well, I, I, maybe we can do this experiment. You can share this on your LinkedIn and see, yeah. I bet your group would be like, what's Lisa doing? Oh yeah. You know, but I like, what does that say about my group? I'm like, what? <laughs> Come on. Okay. So here's, here's an experiment then. Okay. Yes, so, yes. all right, this is fun. All right. So I will bring Jolene to the Lisa Kennecke world. Right. Yeah. And now I'm curious, it'll be fun to see how many in Jolene's world are okay with the gay or, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. 
I see this as a wonderful friendship moving forward to where we get Midwest and we get the West Coast. At least we can have that sphere of influence and then we'll find a friend on the East Coast. I'll be the sandwich and then we can, you know, pull it all together. Yeah, well, I was thinking of um, at NSA, I was trying to think of different um, different people to have a conversation with. And, and I just was like, uh, who are safe people? You know, it's like, I was I was in NSA for 12 years. I was president for Washington State for three years. Yay. Really, really involved. But I'm like, however, with the last few years here, particularly this last one, I'm like, ooh, who's safe? Like, who's, yeah, exactly. And I just thought of, um, of minorities. Like, people, I'm like, that's who's safe. I don't know who is safe anymore. And mm -hmm. I thought, like, I have, you know, I have all these friends, but I'm like, I do not feel safe. And so I was like, who do I know who's a white male who oh. is, oh, sorry, who's a white male? Because that's what represents NSA is white males. Yep, yep. Uh, and I was like, who is somebody who, 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 who would honor me? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't know. I will tell you that in Wisconsin, I can give you five off the top of my head. And so that that is my sphere. That's what I know. So shout out Roger Wolkoff would be one. Mike Domish would be another one when we're talking about white men. And then my friend Robbie Samuels, who is in charge of the NSA Rainbow Group, and he's in Massachusetts. So there's three right there that I can start with. And do, do you know some white um, cisgender um, what do you, non-gay? Straight, straight. Do you know? Yep, so, straight, yep, that, Roger, that Roger, support? Roger and Mike are there. And if I keep thinking, you know, on, on the spot, yes, I do. So let's keep these conversations going. And, and again, if they're in my sphere, they are usually open right. to learning more. Yeah. Because I too, I mean, I've been disowned. And so the, the patriarchy, I'm like, it takes a lot for me to trust. Yeah the white man, so. Yeah, okay, so to, to wrap here, I want your um, your your fans to know that um, really even one minute a day or five minutes a day, um, learning about this, being curious, it is it is fascinating. I mean, I find it fascinating too. It's, it's more infuriating, but it's also interesting. And um, so to uh, watch some videos, um, to, to, first of all, understand that the news, so you go to the news, go to Next Shark. And I have a list of a couple of them. You just take a breeze and understand that this is happening and it is also local. Even though the local is not recorded or anything, it is happening and it is scary and people are scared to, to go places. Um, and then um, learn about a little bit about the history, but you can also speed listen. There's articles, there's um, podcasts, there's documentaries. Um, and then um, discussions with the Hollywood people, also very interesting. And then there is bystander training. So let's say, um, let's say there's a situation where there's an attack and people are all watching and you're like, you know what? I don't want to be the one watching while this person gets killed. Um, and so they train you of, of what to do. Um, and then, but before that, just, just know that you're making a huge difference with your one minute and five minutes by reading something or listening. But then when you share it, it has to be Oh, this is interesting. Did you know this? I think you might want to listen to this because when you just share it, people don't know why you're sharing it. They, they have no attachment. They don't know why they should read it or listen to it. And so it has to be endorsed and then to feed it uh, because I'll, you know, I've had a few people to share, but it's, I look to their share. It's like nothing for days. And, and so I'm trying, uh, you know, so also there's, um, to put action items, because I, I have a ton of links. Okay, here's how you can get training. Here's some tweets. You don't know what to say, but you support. Here, you can just copy and paste this. Mm -hmm. um, and then, um, it, you know, you can also change your frame because some people don't even know what Stop Asian Hate is. Um, and so changing uh, the cause frame. And then um, I'm also doing, uh, we'll see. So tonight I, I put an event where um, it's how to be an ally. Yep. Um, and this is from how to be an Asian ally. I can't speak to others. Right. Uh, and because this is really all I know. Um, and I know what I need. And so 
um, kind of an open Thursday. I don't know, security-wise, there's a lot of haters out there, so I'm not sure how that works. Um, but where we can talk, you know, in a, in a safe place and just say this is, you know, what's needed. Um, and to reach out to your Asian American um, friends, coworkers, even if it's awkward, even if they don't say anything, if they don't want to talk about it, um, the, you made an effort and they know and that's counted. Yes, Anne, and I want to tell you, my wife and I actually took, I was looking this up, and we took the Hollaback training. Have you heard of this? Yeah, yeah. That was one of the best trainings I have ever been to, and I'm not saying that just because I'm talking to you. Well, tell, but me, it was tell all... me about it, because I've, I've, that's the one I've been um, promoting, because there's a number of them, and I, I got one of them, but a different one by email, but I, I don't have time to read it. Can you share some of what, what Absolutely. you Absolutely, yep. Um, and it was, you know, and again, my wife and I were like, how, how can we help support when, yeah, when this yeah, was yeah. happening? And so we found this free training and that's where they went through. Um, it was an hour training and it was free and yeah. they gave you, they gave you five D's about how you can be a bystander. And so I'm sure I can't remember right now, but yeah, yeah. disrupt, um, you know, um, Oh, there you go. Okay. Disrupt, distract, delegate, delay, direct. Here. Look at you being much quicker than I am, my friend. Well, I, so, um, yeah, go ahead. So that was Angela, my wife and I took that and literally we turned off the TV because we had such a wonderful, rich conversation about how that can be applied to so many different marginalized populations yeah. and that we learned so much more. That's where we learned about the internment camps and the Chinese act and how, you know, how the Chinese from this story, you know, built the railroads and how, you know, everything that we have, right? I mean, I talk about our indigenous people, so we're on their land and how all of the non-white privileged people built America. And it was just fascinating. So please, please, please go to Hollaback. There were 3,000 people on our training. 3,000. Oh, my gosh, that gives me hope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much so that we we're like, we can't even get into the chat. There were so many people who wanted to do that. Oh, my gosh, I'm so thrilled. Um, and okay, I'll put it that in the chat right now. Because um, I, th I think uh, two of my friends signed up, but I haven't heard back, or I don't know if they've had it yet, but um, I highly, just, yeah. highly, highly endorse it. And we're both trainers. Yeah. It had us, it had us engaged the entire time. They had polls about how much do you know about this? What are your <sighs> thoughts on this? You know, and then they give you case studies, right? And they're like, okay, so you show this TikTok video of the person on the subway. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. now bystander are you going to disrupt are you going to distract what are you going to do right and then you know because everybody has different com comfort levels but to be able to say here are the five things that i could teach my young person to know what to do when they see ableism sexism whatever it is oh yes oh i'm so thrilled and i had a um a meeting last night and one of the folks who um sent me this uh, who he was just googling, so he hadn't read it. But I'm like, oh my gosh, that must be the 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 handout to um, delegate delay. Oh, I love it. Oh man, I'm so thrilled, Lisa. I knew this would be a good conversation. I'm just like, you know what, Lisa? She is skilled. She is funny. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You know, and humble. Yes, and all of those things. Oh. So yes, and and I love that we we're opening up the conversation. I went blurry right now. So, oh, yeah. Hi. Well, yeah. thank you very much. Um, and I will put this on YouTube. It'd be fun if we could, you, you can share it on, um, I will. on LinkedIn and I can share it too. We'll see. Okay. Did I get any, did you get yeah. any? Okay. Yeah. And maybe we can get back together in a couple of weeks or so yeah. and just be like, you know, Hey, what's happening? How are, how can I, you know, help you in Wisconsin and, and stuff? So, yay. yeah, well, I mean, the interview, the reason I reached out to you because you just did a, such a beautiful job with going, you know, through the ABCs of LGBTQ plus. And I just was so thrilled. Oh, oh, that's the name of your book. OK, it how to sure be an is. ally. Yeah. yeah. And, and I want my my group to know that. I think it's really so interesting. I think people think of. Um, inclusion training as you can't do this, you can't do that. 
but it's like, oh my gosh, like Lisa, Lisa K, the everyday gay is super funny. So it's like, you know, so yep. anyways. Yeah. All right. No shaming here. Oh, <laughs> such a, such a thanks treat for you, my friend. Yeah. Let's get back in touch and we'll do it again. Okay. Thanks a lot, Lisa. All right. All right bye-bye. Dear. Bye-bye. When was the last time you felt like this? Has it been a minute? It is time to mix it up. Climb out on those limbs and jump into life. Life is full of excitement. We just need to get curious, get uncomfortable, and go for it.